Funding for the Iowa Girls High School Softball Championships is provided by... The path to greatness starts early. The Iowa Farm Bureau believes in Iowa's youth and their pursuit of greatness. That's why we're proud to be the title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Each student's effort is important, and when one rises, we all rise to a better Iowa. Fairway, along with Nabisco, Wells Blue Bunny, and Frito-Lay, is a proud sponsor of the 2015 Iowa Girls High School Sports Championships. We congratulate all the schools and student athletes participating in this year's Girls High School State Softball Championships. Fairway, proud to care for the places we work and live. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialist, providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community. Mid-American Energy and their Energy Advantage programs are dedicated to increasing the awareness of energy efficiency in Iowa's homes and businesses. Information is at midamericanenergy.com. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. back to Fort Dodge, Iowa from Harlan Rogers Sports Complex on Buena Vista University Field. It is the Iowa Farm Bureau, Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union State Softball Championships. And in this 3A matchup, we've got number one Solon against number two Benton Community, a couple of teams familiar with each other out of the same conference. Good afternoon, Brad Wells alongside Molly Parrott. Jeff Amadeo will be joining us in just a little bit. And Molly, this 3A matchup, very exciting. Two solid pitchers and very dangerous offense. Lineups. I think most folks around the state would have maybe assumed that Benton and Solon would be the two teams meeting in the championship game today. Both teams excited to be here and like you said, great pitching and potent offenses. The Solon Spartans, they were the 4A runner-ups a year ago as they've been making some noise this week at the state championships. Well, Taylor Nierad going to highlight her first. She's a senior center fielder, had a home run in the semifinal and in fact was just a triple away from hitting for the cycle. Uh, very good on the base paths as well and very athletic in center field also want to highlight Emily Ira another senior for the Spartans she's a lefty in the circle might cause some challenges for Benton she's also very potent at the plate she'll play softball at Western Illinois one year from now the Benton community Bobcats back for the first time since 1998 they won it all that year and they've got a solid kid in the circle as well no seniors on this Benton team led in the circle by Amber Pfizer she's a junior has plenty of Division I offers for softball. In fact, she had her 1,000th career strikeout in yesterday's semifinal. She'll need some strong defense behind her because of these big Solon bats. Also want to talk about Alyssa Weevil, another junior over at the hot corner. Four for four in yesterday's semifinal, including seven RBIs, two home runs. She's already verbal to Illinois State, and she's only a junior. So we've got one state champion crowned today. It's time to get started on our 3A contest here. It's Solon against Benton Community. Here's PA announcer Randy Krejci. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Harlan and Hazel Rogers Sports Complex and this 3A championship game between the Spartans of Solon High School and the Bobcats of Benton Community. Let's meet all the non-starters first for the visitors from Solon. Haley Kleesner, Michaela Sukamel, Taylor Moore, Tara Lance, Haley Denny, Emma Winders, Delaney Bear, Lissa Hustle, Skylar Stuckey, and Molly Duckett. The assistant coaches for Solon, Jody Sheets, Malia Flig. Now the non-starters for the home team, Benton Community. McKenna Bonowitz, Laura Machino, Samantha Robbie, Macy Schmidt, and Holly Schulte. 
the assistant coaches, Stady Schmieder and Allison Galbraith. And now your starters for the Spartans of Solon High School. Leading off and the playing shortstop, Sid Lawson. The second batter up the pitcher, Emily Ira. Batting third, playing center field, Taylor Nirad. The cleanup hitter is second baseman, Ali Hurtliska. Batting fifth, doing the catching, Monica Bevins. Batting sixth, the third base, Jess Height. Batting seventh is the first baseman, McKenna Miller. Batting eighth in right field, Nicole Overthing. The designated player bats night, Lexi Stebrall. And the flex player in left field, Taylor Ryan. The head coach for the Spartans, Mr. Jim White. And now the starters for the Bobcats of Benton Community. Playing shortstop and leading off, Lee Brunson. Batting second, center fielder, Shelby Holzebus. Batting third, playing third base, Alyssa Weeble. The cleanup hitter is the catcher, J.C. Lyons. Batting fifth in right field, Angie Gorko. Batting sixth at first base, Anna Stenberg. Batting seventh, the left fielder, Jesse Havlick. Batting eighth, the pitcher, Amber Pfizer. Batting ninth, the designated player, Jessica Heilman. And the flex player at second base, Grace Martinson. The head coach for the Bobcats, Mr. Eric Stenberg. Now please turn your attention to the home plate area, the umpires that are assigned by the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. At first base, Carl Woldrich. At third base, Jason Slater. And behind the plate calling balls and strikes is Sergio Villarreal. Now it's not only time for this WAMAC conference encounter, it's time for the Class 3A State Championship Softball Game. All right, let's take a look at the Benton Bobcats defensive starters now as they lay out on the field. As we begin with the outfielders here, Jesse Havlick in left, Shelby Hulsebus in center, Angie Gorko in right field. The infield goes Alyssa Weeble at third, Lee Brunson at shortstop, Grace Martinson at second base, Anna Stenberg at first, the catcher, J.C. Lyons, and in the circle, Amber Pfizer. Amber Pfizer, what a talented pitcher. Look at that ERA, .05. Yesterday in semifinal action, they took a break in the middle of the game. I don't know that I've seen this before to recognize her for reaching 1,000 career strikeouts. The big key in this game will be her defense playing behind her. They were a little error prone in the quarterfinal game against Mount Vernon. This Solon team, big sticks. They want to put pressure on the defense in a hurry. It's one of the big matchups for today is that starter in Pfizer against these Solon bats. And, and we'll, we'll see it the other way as well, but this might be uh, one of the bigger keys. And you mentioned that 1,000 strikeouts. Came in the second inning, got three strikeouts right off the bat, and uh, just had a, a heck of a game. As we take a look at these Solon starters now. Sydney Lawson will lead things off. Emily Ira batting third. Taylor Nerad batting fourth. Then Allie Herdliska, Monica Bevins, Hike Miller Obertein and Lexi Stebrall, the designated player, rounds things out. So Sydney Lawson gets things started for Solon. As Pfizer goes to work right away, pumping a strike in there to start the game. The Solon team, three senior starters. Definitely the leaders on this squad. Sydney Lawson, though, a junior, very talented. 
Fires are going right after the batter here. No balls, two strikes on the leadoff batter, Lawson. Lawson, the first of several lefties we'll see out of the Spartans lineup. Well, here's Pfizer. Ball just missed the outside corner. Pfizer, a young lady with 1,000 career strikeouts, a junior in the circle for Benton Community. And there's a called strike three for the first out of this 3A championship game. Excellent pitch calling there by Benton Community coaching staff and catcher behind the plate. Pfizer got up on Lawson exactly what she wanted to do and then just painted that outside corner, making it awfully difficult for the lefty who's on her way to first base to reach that outside pitch. And Lawson knew it was going to be strike three right away, headed towards the dugout as Emily Ryra comes to the plate. As we've mentioned, these teams very familiar with each other. It'll be interesting to see the chess match as this game evolves. Coaching staff certainly know a lot about the opposing student athletes. It's a big swing by Ira, and the count evens up. One ball, one strike. Both teams out of the WAMAC conference played each other twice earlier in the year. Ball. And split, so. The rubber match comes in the state championship game for these two teams. I think we can expect Pfizer to continue to paint that outside corner, particularly against these lefties in this Solon lineup, make it really difficult for them to run to first when you're trying to hit that outside pitch. Fly ball left side of the infield, and there is room for Weevil to make the catch in foul territory. Weevil showing off some of her defensive prowess there. She is. A heck of an offensive player, as was displayed in yesterday's semifinal action. You mentioned earlier Weeble of Benton Community, the third baseman, committed to play at Illinois State. Just a junior, though, for the Bobcats. And Pfizer continues to pump the strike zone. She's doing exactly what you want to do. The Solon offense, too good to give base runners free rides. She is really doing an excellent job of getting on top of hitters. Swing and a miss by Nirad. Nirad had a huge semifinal game for the Solon Spartans. With a pair of runs scored. A home run in the first inning. There's a pop fly. It's going to stay on the infield. Weaver will take it. And it's one, two, three. Three up, three down for the Benton Bobcat defense. As Solon's top of the order held quiet here in the first one? inning. Do you, do you need that one? Or do you have one? All right, let's take a look now at the Solon Spartans defense in the outfield. Taylor Ryland and center field Taylor Nerad and in right field Nicole Overteen. The infield. Jess Hike at third. Left side of the infield also has Sid Lawson at shortstop. Ali Herdliska at second. And McKenna Miller at first base. Monica Bevins behind the plate for pitcher Emily Ira, who is in the circle. And you see her 25 win, just two loss record. She's a good one. Well, she pitches from the left side, and that's something that you don't see a whole lot of at the high school level. We'll see how Benton Community is able to adjust. It's, it's, they've seen her before. These two, two, two teams split in the regular season, so it's not as though they are unfamiliar, but still, it may take a little bit of an adjustment. Take a look at the Benton Bobcat starting lineup. Lee Brunson, the shortstop, will start things off. Then Olsebus and center bats second Weeble. The big bat at number three for Benton Community. Then J.C. Lyons, Angie Gorko, Anna Stenberg, Havlick, Pfizer, and Jessica Heilman, the designated player. That's how Benton Community will send them <laughs> to the plate in order. The bulk of this Bobcats offense comes from the first three hitters in the lineup yesterday. Those three players alone were nine of nine at the plate and in the tournament those three players accounting for 13 of Benton's 15 team hits. Definitely the leaders of this team and definitely the kids that set the tone for the entire team offensively. Ball. First pitch from Ira to Lee Brunson. 
This is the strike zone. And as we've said, no, no, excuse me, no seniors on this Benton community roster. A junior will try to set the table. It's a check swing strike. Home plate umpire Sergio Villarreal says, yes, she went. Evens the count at one apiece. So the nerves still settling in the first inning for both squads here in the Class 3A state championship game as Brunson looks at a strike. Just like that, Ira ahead in the count, one ball, two strikes. Emily Ira will play at Western Illinois in the fall, talking to coach Jim White. I think they're going to look at her a little bit in the outfield, but certainly feel that there is some potential for her in the circle as well. And there's a strike out for Ira. Swing and a miss by Brunson, and there's one away for the Spartan defense. Great job, Emily Ira, keeping that one-two count out of the zone, making her chase. Certainly don't want to give her anything to work with in that situation. Shelby Usabus, the freshman center fielder to the plate for Benton Community. Ira hits the inside corner. Solent really bringing their defenders in on Hulsebus. The freshman has not been intimidated at all in this postseason five of six in the first two games here in Fort Dodge. Yesterday she was three for three and had a sacrifice. There's a swing and a miss to push the count to 0-2. Two strikes. Two batters in. These Bobcats having a hard time laying off of Ira's high heat. So the lefty winds and delivers. There's a slap left side of the infield. Fielded by Lawson. Beating it out is Hulsebus. She put it so exactly where she wanted to. There's another look at it. Right past the third baseman's glove. And what a close play there at first. She really scooted down that first baseline. Sydney Lawson made some very athletic moves from short yesterday. One of the best shortstops in the state. A huge swing from Alyssa Weeble on the first pitch from Ibel, from Iris. So Hulsebus at first, seven stolen bases on the season, but Weeble, the big bat for the Bobcats at the plate here with one out. And another big swing as Emily Ira goes right after her. Goes right after her is exactly right. Two Chatting strikes. with Weeble after the game yesterday, she was happy just to see some pitches she could hit. Mount Vernon chose to walk her three times in their first round action. I think was a smart move by the coaching staff at Mount Vernon, but she wants to have that bat in her hand. And Weeble goes down swinging. And so it's two strikeouts for Emily Ira. And here's another look at it. So, we're Solon and Benton Community. Two outs here, Benton Community with a base runner aboard in this first inning. And to the plate, J.C. Lyons. Let's see if maybe Shelby Holsebus looks for a steal opportunity here. This Benton Community squad, I don't know that you can see it on television, but they use wristbands instead of signals. Uh, they will look at wristbands for pitch calls. They'll look at wristbands for what they're doing at the plate. They'll look at wristbands for base running plays as well. There's a called strike. Evens the count one and one on J.C. Lyons, the sophomore catcher for Benton Community. And there's a good look at J.C. Lyons checking her wristband. Head coach Eric Stenberg gives her a number sequence. She checks her wristband to see what the game plan is. Lyons a foul tip. As Hulsebus was on the move down towards second. She'll return to first and we'll do it again. Here we go, buddy, here we go. One ball, two strikes. So one and two is the count. Two outs, first inning. Benton with a runner aboard. Lions a swing and a miss, and that's strike three for out number three. So three strikeouts for Emily Ira, the senior pitcher, as the Bobcats get a runner aboard, but can't take advantage. Emily Ira just goes right at those Bobcats hitters and did an excellent job of getting ahead, 
and then making those batters chase pitches outside of the zone. So through the first inning, we are scoreless. Let's take a look at the tournament bracket for these two teams as their road to the final for Solon. See them there on top against Clark. Put up some huge offensive numbers, 18 runs and three innings, and then top center point Urbana yesterday in the semifinals. Benton Community beating Mount Vernon and then Greene County yesterday. So let's take a look at the keys to a victory for today's teams. Let's start with the Solon Lady Spartans. Well, you have to talk about their powerful lineup. They have some gaudy statistics, which you will see throughout the game as these batters step up to the plate. They also have to handle the pressure and expectations. They were the 4A runner-up last year. Two years ago, we were runner-up again. And they have come into this game and come into this season, I think, expecting to win a state championship. They're down a class. They were the second smallest school in 4A a year ago. Benton community must have production from the top of their order. As we said, 13 of their 15 hits in the tournament coming from the top three in the order. And they have to play solid defense behind Amber Pfizer. She strikes out so many batters on the year. They often don't have many opportunities to make plays on defense. These Bobcats in the blue jerseys have got to be very handy with her gloves today. So coming to the plate, Allie Herdliska. <laughs> Senior second baseman for the Solon Spartans. Looks at strike one, hitting over 500, and has that home run power. Ball. Allie Herdliska has actually done a lot of catching in the past, but apparently she had an arm injury from the high school soccer season. So they have her at second base for the year. She'll play at South Dakota State next year. I'm not sure what the game plan is, but she'd probably like to get back behind the plate if her arm allows her to do so. A broke her arm playing soccer, was the goalie for the Solon soccer team. One ball, two strikes. And she worked back into it, just uh, worked in at second base there. With Monica Bevins taking Ball. over the catching duties. As we'll see her next. So the count even, two and two. Here on Herd Liska as we start the second inning. A high fly ball Tim left Martin. field. Looks like it's in foul territory. As Havlick gives chase. It lands well out in foul territory. Herdliska with a bomb yesterday in the semifinal. Really gets her bat on the ball. Solid contact. Not surprising that she'll play softball at a very high level next year in college. There's Pfizer's delivery. And there's strike three. Second strikeout of the game for Amber Pfizer. Again, Amber Pfizer continues to go right at these Solon hitters. Talking to Coach Jim White a year ago, Solon was facing Paige Lowry, the stud for Dallas Center Drives in the final. And he said he Ball. thought that they would do better against her offensively in that championship game, and they just didn't. So the game plan, actually, they were going to hit last night or yesterday afternoon after their game to prepare for Pfizer because they yep. knew that she was a much better pitcher than what they'd faced all week long. Change your pace a little bit too, a little more speed and a little more to it for Amber Pfizer. And here Bevins works the count to 2 0. Hey. Pfizer finally drills one right down the middle to make it 2 1. One away here in the top of the second inning. Solon still looking for their first base runner. Ball. Evans looks at that one low, and it's three and one. Pfizer does such a great job of placing the ball three all ball. over that strike zone. Right. Excellent command. Evans on the season, eight home runs. Hey. And looks at strike two, thought it was inside. Runs the count full here with one out. Three balls, two strikes. Pfizer with a pair of strikeouts already. Ball. And puts the first base runner on with a pitch inside at the knees. Looks like Coach White may 
utilize the courtesy the runner here Duckett. for his catcher. So into the game, Molly Duckett, a freshman. Number 28. 28, Duckett's gonna courtesy run, first base. And we hear our home plate umpire, Sergio Villarreal. So Jess Hike, the third baseman, will come to the plate for Solon. And it's gonna be a courtesy runner, just tell him. Thank you. Duckett does have a handful of stolen bases on this season, not a huge base stealing threat, but she must be pretty good over there if they trust her to be a courtesy runner in the state championship game. Five stolen bases on the season. They scored 18 runs. Pitch by Pfizer misses outside as Duckett. Pretty good lead on the pitch. Keep an eye on her. There's a slap into left field. Down in front of the left fielder, Havlick. And on the move is Duckett. Duckett getting waved home. And Solon is on the scoreboard first here in the 3A championship game. Well, Coach White talked a lot after the game yesterday about putting the pressure on the defense. And yesterday, in semifinal action against center point Urbana, he said, could look at a nice piece of hitting there for Solon. Coach White mentioned, Yesterday's game, they were intentional. They wanted to score a run every inning. They were very intentional about manufacturing runs in each of those seven innings. And we'll see if they can put more than one on the board here, maybe put together a little bit of a big inning. So an RBI for Jess Hike. McKenna Miller now at the plate with Hike at second base with a double for the first hit and the first run for Solon here in the second inning. Little pop up to the infielder. Pfizer handles it with ease for out number two. And you can tell the Solon squad, not only do they have a lot of big sticks at the plate, but they're aggressive on the base pass. They take big jumps. Even if they're not stealing, you, you see a lot of movement by the Bobcat defense, always thinking, using their peripheral vision. Is the girl in the orange jersey leading off? Is she possibly stealing? Really making this Bobcats defense think. So we've got Nicole Overteen, the junior right fielder at the plate for Solon. Amber Pfizer working with a runner in scoring position and two outs. And this is low. One and one the count. Another big jump out of second base. So far haven't seen J.C. Lyons behind the plate for Benton looking to pick any runners off. See if that changes as those jumps continue to get bigger. A swing and a miss, and there's two strikes now. Pfizer trying to sit down Oberteen. And we saw a delayed steal be very important in that previous championship game. Base running was a, really the, the winning factor in that first championship contest. Just missed inside. Oberteen working with two strikes. And the Iowa. City Regina Regals dropping Cascade 2-0 in that 2A championship game earlier today. A swing by Overteen to follow it away and stay alive. And we'll see if Amber Pfizer's seen enough and just wants to handle it herself. Certainly Two. capable of doing that. Over 1,000 career strikeouts, as we've mentioned. Getting Division I offers. And there is strike three. That's part of the reason why. Three strikeouts now for Amber Pfizer through two innings. So we go down to our sideline reporter, Mark Amadeo. All right, thanks, Brad, as we have uh, Gary Zittergruen, the guy who went out a champion in his final game as a head softball coach, now superintendent of the Benton Community Bobcats. And coach, it's been, what, 17 years since you took the diamond and going out a winner. It's great to be back in Fort Dodge and uh, just a wonderful opportunity for our entire school community. We're very proud of the Lady Bobcats. It's been a great year, and I really think we have two of the top teams in the state of Iowa meeting here in the 
3A final today. Well, this is the third time you've uh, met the two teams out of a great conference over there in Eastern Iowa. Talk a little about that. Yeah, we uh, the conference has been very strong this summer. You know, we have center point Urbana here as well. Mount Vernon finished fifth. They were our first round opponent. We played Solon early in the year, uh, two one-run ball games. So uh, this is kind of the rubber match today. But well, now you can sit back and watch and uh, root on uh, Coach uh, Stenberg. He's doing a great job. Eric's done a terrific job, the coaching staff. And, uh, you know, we're a young ball club. We don't have a senior on the team. So uh, the future looks very bright for Benton community in softball. Gary, thanks for spending some time with us. You bet. Thank you. All right. Brad Molly. Thank you very much, Mark. Yeah. Gary Zittergrew, and we got an opportunity to talk to him yesterday, didn't we, Molly? Yeah, we did. Nice to talk shop a little bit with the former head coach and current superintendent. Able to go out a champion in 1998. He said, now, he said this Benton Bobcat team would be pretty fun to coach. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of weapons. A lot of weapons indeed. And, and as he said, future is very, very bright. Uh, coach Stenberg, in fact, it's Dr. Stenberg. Mm -hmm. Actually asked him yesterday in his day job. Oh, he's an ER doctor down in Iowa City. Only his second year as the head coach. But he said, this is like vacation. <laughs> <laughs> He so, can handle this kind of pressure anytime, right? Yeah. A one-run game, that's no thing for an emergency room doctor. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I'd say that's a pretty good hire there. No wonder they, I don't know if they have a, an athletic trainer in their in their dugout or not. They maybe don't need it. They're probably covered, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here's Emily Ira working against Angie Gorko. Just finished her eighth grade year playing right field for the Bobcats. Talk about Benton community having no seniors on the roster. Couple of freshmen. Gorko, an eighth grader. And working the count to two and two. She had a good regular season for the Bobcats. Looking to unleash here at the state tournament. There's Ira, foul tip, and the catcher can't hang on. As you mentioned, Gorko, just an eighth grader, not intimidated about the state tournament at all. Two of two in her first game against Mount Vernon in that quarterfinal action. And how about this? Leads the team in walks this season. And there's a strike three. Just couldn't quite hold up on that high heat from Emily Ira. Oh, we've seen that a bunch today. Emily Iowa doing a great job of getting on top of hitters and then getting them to chase that high heat. Must look awfully fat coming in and then it just rises on up out of the zone. Ball. To the plate, Anna Stenberg. As we did have a base runner aboard for Benton Community in that first inning, but our first four outs of this championship game, all strikeouts by Emily Ira for Solon. Well, we mentioned Amber Pfizer's uh, sparkling .05 ERA. Mm -hmm. Emily Ira, no, no slacker herself, a .50 ERA. And I think that left side, pitching from that left side, slightly different vantage point for these bitten hitters, may take a time through the order in order to adjust a little bit. There's a swing and a miss, or high heat. From Ira, she's getting Benton community to go after those. Up above the elbows, even close to the shoulders. 2-1 the count. Swing and a miss. Well, if you're in that batter's box and it's, it looks too good to be true, it probably is. If it's coming right down the pipe, right about your belt line, it's probably rising up a little bit. Imagine that's a point of discussion for Coach Stenberg in those huddles. It's a swing and a miss, and one more strikeout for Emily Ira. All five outs, strikeouts for the senior pitcher for the Solon Spartans. So up to the plate, Jesse Havlick, freshman left fielder. First pitch strike to Havlick. Havlick a single, stolen base, and scored in the second inning of the semifinals. See if she can get a two-out rally started for Benton Community. 
Ira is on a roll right now. No balls, two strikes. Doing, the Solon pitcher. And doing to Stenberg what Pfizer has done to so many of the lefties in the Solon lineup. Really painting that outside pointer, corner, excuse me. And strike three, so six strikeouts through two innings for Emily Ira and the Bobcats. Still scoreless. Let's take a look at Emily Ira's work so far through the first two innings. Well, the lefty has been impressive. As we mentioned in the pregame, she carries a big stick at the plate, but wow, she looks like she wants to do it herself on the defensive end, not even giving her teammates any chances to make sparkling defensive plays. Here's a look now as we flip the diamond Amber Pfizer in slow motion. See the big push off, off the rubber. And really using those hips, using those legs. Great look at her in slow motion there. Maybe a little bit of, uh, I don't think she liked that pitch call there on that <laughs> facial expression. <laughs> Maybe disagreed with the umpire on that last one, but great, uh, great work there by the ITTV crew putting together that slow-mo camera. So <laughs> Pfizer will go to work now for the Benton Bobcat defense as she gets warmed up, Solon. We'll come to the plate here in the third inning, 9-1-2. It'll be Lexi Stebrel to lead things off and then top the order with Sydney Lawson and Emily Ira. Just one hit for this very solid Solon offense. Eight batters through the lineup. That was a good look. You saw head coach Jim White having a quick chat with Lexi Stebro about her approach here, facing Amber Pfizer. So there's Stebro for the Solon Spartans. A designated player at the plate. Looks at the ball upstairs. Pfizer's done such a great job of getting on top of Solon hitters, exactly what you want to do against players who are as good offensively as the Spartans are. A swing and a miss by Stebro. Pretty good pitcher's duel so far here as we've completed two innings. Three strikeouts for Pfizer, six for Ira. Two of the better pitchers in the state. I think that's what you can expect. We had a similar pitcher's duel in the first matchup today. One ball, but often you get strike. through that lineup once and, and offensive players tend to adjust, or at least you hope that they adjust. It's a foul tip to stay alive by Lexi Stebrel. Yeah, a couple Division I talents throwing today for both squads, as we mentioned. Emily Ira for Solon committed to Western Illinois, and Amber Pfizer getting multiple Division I offers so far. The junior has not made a decision or a verbal commitment. Ground ball. Weevil fields it at third and makes the play for out number one. As you mentioned, several players in this state tournament will play at various levels in college. We've seen a lot of college coaches from various levels around Fort Dodge this week. Great job by Weevil over in the hot corner. And Weevil, another one of those players that will play Division I, has committed to Illinois State. And is on the hot Ball. corner for the Bobcats. Sydney Lawson, top of the order for Solon here. And Benton knows the speed of Lawson. Second baseman Grace Martinson right next to Amber Pfizer on that infield. Weeble very close as well. Here's a pop up and it's over the backstop. Out of play. Sydney Lawson, not too many strikeouts on the season. But Struck out looking in that first inning. Looked at some pretty good pitches. I think if Amber Pfizer's doing such a great job of getting on top of hitters, these Solon batters have got to be ready. That first pitch is likely going to be the best one you see. There's the delivery and a slap foul. Third base side into the dugout. It's one ball, two strikes with one out Time. here in the third inning. Thank you. Lawson, five of ten in this tournament. Thank you. Very athletic at the shortstop position. Made a couple of sparkling plays. A couple of 
hits look like they were gonna get through the middle of the infield. She came right across, fielded smoothly through on the run. Lawson looks at strike three for the second time in this ball game, and there's two away here in the third inning. Pfizer just continues to paint that outside corner against these lefties. Great shot of it here. Lawson not so convinced that that was a strike, but looked pretty good from this angle. So Emily Ira to the plate. Fly ball out of play behind the backstop. She popped out to the third baseman Weeble in foul territory in the first inning. And Solon went down one, two, three in that first inning. Two away though here in the third. Pitcher to pitcher battle. Ball. Geyser just misses. As we've said, these two teams know each other well, not a lot of secrets, so interesting to see how this chess match continues to evolve now that we're the second time through this lineup. I don't think they changed their strategy all that much against Sidney Lawson. Another swing and a foul back by Ira. So two strikes now. One ball. On this pitcher pitcher matchup, we'll start the bottom of the third with a pitcher pitcher matchup as Amber Pfizer. Due to lead off the bottom of the third. There's a swing and a miss, strike three. So two strikeouts in this inning for Amber Pfizer. And Solon goes down in order, one, two, three. So here's a look now at Emily Ira from the rubber in slow motion. The lefty. Just, just put it through the dugout, how's that? See the big push off and a wrist flip at the end. Just. Great job of getting those hips through. Good piece of camera work, as you said. Yeah. We'll see pitcher on pitcher here. Now that's what it looks like in slow motion. Yeah. For the batters for Benton community, it's uh, it's not so easy to handle as we've got six strikeouts in the first two innings by Emily Ira. Uh, she, she's throwing them in there real quick. Oh, absolutely, both these player, pitchers really bringing it. You might be able to see the spin on the laces in slow-mo, but I, I guarantee <laughs> you cannot see them when you're at the plate. So there's a good look at Emily Ira, the pitcher for the Solon Spartans. Her final warm-up and we'll be on our way here in just a little bit. Benton Community's Amber Pfizer, the pitcher, will lead things off. Jessica Heilman, designated player batting second, and then Benton Community will get to the top of their order. For the second time through facing Ira with Lee Brunson, leadoff batter. See if Pfizer can help her cause, maybe set the table for the top of their order. Again, the Bobcats. Hitters one, two, three have been very good this week. Haven't gotten a lot of production from four through nine. See if Pfizer can maybe change that tune here. So bottom of the third inning, Solon scoring one in the top of the second with a walk and an RBI double from Jess Hike. They look to hold on to their one run lead as Benton comes to the plate here in the third. And missing low is Ira. Amber Pfizer digs in for her first time facing Ira today. The Solon squad. As you might expect, look very cool, calm, collected. Played in the 4A state championship game a year ago. Two years prior to that, also runner-up. So they've been to many state tournaments the last several years. They know what this is all about. Not easily rattled. So far have handled the pressure and the, and the expectations. There's a called strike as Pfizer thought it was outside. Ira gets the call and it's one and two. Yeah, talk about motivation. Both team, both teams kind of came in with their own motivation. Benton Community getting knocked out in the regional final a year ago. Pfizer a swing and a miss. Strikeout number seven for Solins Emily Ira. And there's one away here in the third. Amber Pfizer isn't quite able to catch up with the heat that Emily Ira is bringing. That previous called strike, you could tell Amber Pfizer shaking her head. She did not agree with the umpire behind the plate. It's 
it's one of those situations where you just have to forget about it. And as the pitcher, she's paying those inside and outside corners. She knows exactly what the strike zone looks like. So now she, as a hitter herself, needs to adjust. All of the hitters on both squads need to do a little better job of adjusting the second time through the order. Jessica Heilman, the designated player, swinging. And it's one and one. Now we saw it a little bit in the top of this inning with Sid Lawson. She kind of chased a couple of those outside corner pitches and eventually would look at strike three again, but her second time through the order, you get a little better feel for not just the pitcher, but the umpire strikes on every, every one uh, might be a little bit different just as you see it from the batter's box. Absolutely, that's why I think it's so important. You don't want to see a, a good one strike ball, pass you strikes. by. If that's, a first, if that's the first pitch that you see, Go for it. Because once you have a strike on you and you're the hitter, you're behind, that pitcher is in control. And that's when she can really work those inside outside corners. Popped foul first base side, landed on top of the Solon dugout. So still with two strikes is Jessica Heilman. One and two. Here with one out in the bottom of the third inning. Another swinging strike three by a Benton Bobcat and through the order once. Emily Iris faced nine batters and has eight strikeouts. Well, Heilman looked like she was maybe going to shorten up a little bit. Sometimes see that in softball, or you might kind of square up to the pitcher, choke up a little bit. She still looked like she took a, a full cut there. So top of the order, Lee Brunson. I'm fine, swinging you. a foul tip. Thanks for caring. No balls, one strike. Ball. Ira with a little off-speed pitch there. Outside. Haven't seen her use that changeup all that much in this game. It's done a really nice job of hitting her spots, using the high heat, but there she goes off-speed, just misses the mark. Brunson looks at strike two. I'm very impressed by both of these pitchers in the ways that they are able to hit their spots. One ball, two strikes. Both teams allowed just one run in the semifinal games that they played yesterday. Both games right here on this Buena Vista University field. There's a pop fly center field. The defense will get to work for the first time. And a nice play made by Ali Herdliska, the second baseman. Awfully good piece of defensive work there from the former catcher. Again, that arm injury has kept her from catching this year. Showing her athleticism. Nice play Sorry, in shallow two. center field. Allie hurt Liska. So the first non strikeout for the Solon defense. Emily Ira with eight strikeouts through three Thank innings. You. Good look there at the Solon huddle and Jim White Thank instructing you. his players and will make his way over to Mark for a little sideline interview. Yeah, Mark Amadeo joined now with Solon head coach Jim White. Coach, you got one run, you got a couple more. Your kids are attacking that a pretty good pitcher. Uh, very good pitcher, and uh, we, we've seen her a lot over time, but uh, boy, I'm super impressed with her, uh, the way she's getting ahead of that low pitch, and it's uh, moving away from her left-handers. Uh, I mean, it's a tough pitch to hit. Your uh, defense playing very well, as they've had all year, but to make some big plays. Yep, uh, that's a great play right there by our second baseman, and you don't want to give any base runners, especially with the next two up in that order. Uh, those top three are special for them, so. Your kids are really attacking the strikes on that bat, and that's that's being aggressive. Yeah, that's what that's who we are. So, coach, best of luck. All right, thank you. All right, back to you guys. So that is head coach Jim White, who won his 900th career game earlier this season, as he has been at it for a while. Well, that makes us feel like we know what we're talking about a little bit. Yep. Talked about some of those same themes. Pfizer keeping those left-handed batters off balance, using that outside pitch effectively, really getting on top of hitters. Imagine that was a point of discussion in his huddle before he hustled over for that sideline interview. We'll see if they can adjust in the box. 
Taylor Nerad, a big swinger for the Spartans, pops it up shallow left, and the shortstop cannot get back to it. Brunson, as it was just about to come down, stopped and turned around, looked at Jesse Havlick in left field, and Havlick was in no position to make that catch. Well, that's what happens when you put the ball, the bat on the ball. It's, it's maybe looked like it was going to be an easy out, a can of corn of sorts, but a great job of hustling down near Ed to second base. Didn't quit on it. And you mark it down as a double. A couple of defensive miscues by the Bobcats, and we said this defense needed to play well behind Pfizer. Sure, she'll strike out her fair share. But this Solon squad, too bit, too good at the plate. You know they're going to put the ball in play. Put part the, of the pressure on the defense. Yep, part of the order here for Solon with Herdliska at the plate. There's a swing. Shallow left coming in is Havlick and able to make the catch. And back to second goes Nirad. Nirad with a pretty big lead there. It looked as though the left fielder maybe got a late jump on it, did a nice job of taking that first step back and then was able to run forward, catch up, make kind of the shoelace grab. Nirad dives back into second base head first. Solon with a base runner aboard in the second inning, able to bring it in for the game's lone run thus far. Monica Bevins with a big cut, first offering by Pfizer. And Monica Bevins Got aboard, looks at strike two here, but got aboard courtesy of a walk in the second inning. And Molly Duckett courtesy ran and scored the Spartans we'll only run. Her. Imagine Pfizer will try to keep the pitch out of the zone here. Got first base open, don't want to give her anything too sweet. Here's the 0-2. Pfizer tallies another strikeout to her total. Six now for Amber Pfizer, as there's two away here in the fourth. So Pfizer continues to work. This time, Jess Hike, who had the RBI double in the second inning, drove in Duckett. And she'll have an opportunity here with two outs to bring another run in for Solon. Slap foul by Hike. And it's 0-2 now. Second base for Benton Community. That's great. Grace Martinson playing in quite a bit on Hike, even though it sure looks like from here, like she's taking a pretty good cut up there. Doesn't necessarily look like she's just looking to slap it through, but we'll see. I'm sure Grace Martinson has been coached to play in that position. Maybe they're feeling like she might pull the ball a little bit to the right side of the infield. Yep. But the shortstop is back. If she can somehow poke it to the left side, she'd have a pretty good shot at being safe. High fly ball, two shallow two center. Two. Coming in to make the catch. Pulsibus and ends the inning for the Benton Bobcats. So it remains a one run game. Solon with a runner aboard, but can't do anything with it. It was a lead off double. And let's take a look now at Amber Pfizer's, excuse me, Emily Ira. Take a listen in on her strikeouts thus far. Almost all of those high in the zone, making those Bobcats chase. Awfully difficult to catch up to that high pitch when it's coming in that hard. Eight of the first nine outs have come on strikeouts. Benton with one hit so far in the game, and that came by Shelby Hulsebus, who will lead off this bottom of the fourth inning. A little slap to the left side of the infield in the first. She's the Bobcats' only base runner so far. See if she can get something started here in the fourth inning. It's the Class 3A state championship game. Solon ranked number one. Benton Community ranked number two at the end of the season. 
by the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. We'll see the Spartans defense really creep in on Holsebus. Not a lot of power. You can tell she really chokes up on the bat. It's almost as Ira is working into her pitching motion, ch chokes up a little bit. Really just looking to kind of poke it through, put the ball in play and let her speed go to work. Halsebus looks at a strike, count even at one and one. So Shelby Halsebus at the plate, a freshman center fielder, was three for three yesterday in the semifinals. Scored a pair of runs. She knows how to get on base. She's got a great eye. Not chasing pitches here, forcing Ivor to bring it down into the strike zone. I'm sure Coach Stenberg has been challenging his troops to lay off those high pitches. See, Hulsebus looks locked in. Here's the 2 1. That's up high. She's able to hold. Three balls and a strike. Showing for excellent discipline here. Three balls. One Pretty strike. impressive out of a freshman. Ball. And that one is low for ball four. Pulsibus is aboard for the second time. And that brings up Alyssa Weeble, the big stick for the Benton Bobcats. And all of a sudden, the Solon defense has to think a little bit more. They've, they've had things a little bit easy. Emily Ira has handled so much of it on her own, but now all of a sudden there's a base runner on. And Weeble looks at one upstairs. Is that first inning? I don't know if it was just first inning jitters. Everybody was excited. Weeble swung, I believe, the first three pitches and took went some, down, and some of those were pretty high as you saw the strikeouts. Took some big cuts. There's another big one right there. He's trying to connect, evens the count at one apiece. So Hulsebus over at first, Weeble at the plate. And looks at strike two. Melissa well, Weeble leads the state ball, with her 19 strikes. home runs. Has 20 doubles, 63 runs batted in on the year. On a heavy hitter like Weeble, you don't want to take away her power. She can change the, the, the game with one swing of the bat, but yeah. at the same point, She's having a hard time, it appears that she's having a hard time seeing the ball. So maybe shorten up a little bit, maybe take a little smaller cut. Try to make some contact. Big swing, strike three it is. And Weeble down for the second time on strikeouts. Emily Ira continues to add to her strikeout total now at nine as we're in the bottom of the fourth inning. Well, Emily Ira, she she knows her opponents well. She's played against this Benton squad enough. She knows that Alyssa Weeble is a very, very capable hitter, a very, very good hitter. So, but despite that, she just goes right at her, doesn't shy away at all. Love that competitiveness, that fiery spirit out of the senior. And so J.C. Lyons, you see her there for Benton Community to the plate. Struck out in her first at bat in the first inning. As Ira put that first pitch right down the middle. Lions a little bit behind that heater, and it's 0-2. And, and we'll see if maybe Coach Stenberg gives Holsebus the green light here on a steal opportunity. Last time she was on, she was stealing, but then J.C. Lyons ended up striking out on that very pitch. So we'll see, maybe try to get a little movement, maybe make this Solon defense react a bit. And a, on the move, fouling it back is Lyons. So with two strikes. Coach Eric Stenberg trying to put things in motion and force that offense just a little bit more. Benton community looking for some production outside of their top three hitters. Here's Lyons. Looks at one outside. And it's one and two. And again, that chess match continues. Does Coach Stenberg send Holsebus? He was going to two pitches ago. Lyons had fouled it back. Lions doing a good job laying off that last offering that was out of the zone. 
a swing and another foul ball by Lyons as Alcibis was on the move once again. I think as well as Emily Ira is pitching, and as, as much as the lower half of the lineup has struggled for Benton Community, maybe you like to see Coach Stenberg be a little bit more aggressive on the base paths. So far, Emily Ira showing that she's not gonna allow many folks to get on base. And looking at strike three, Lions held up. Little check swing, called strike three. So there's two away now with a base runner aboard, so. Borco, the eighth grader, will step to the plate. Got a couple of hits in their first round action. Angie Gorko, here's a pop fly. Left center field over to make the catch is Nirad, the center fielder. I get it. And so we've got out number three here. And a little bit of communication by the base runner there, Holsebis. She thought there were less than two outs, and on that pop fly, she started tagging back toward first base instead of advancing. So Mark Amadeo now is standing next to Benton Community Head Coach Eric Stenberg. Yeah, thanks, Brad. And uh, Coach, been knocking on the door hitting-wise, just trying to catch up with Iris. She's throwing a nice game for uh, Solon, but your kids are coming around. Starting to get on a little bit. I think we're pretty nervous and chasing a lot of stuff high in the zone at first. So at this point, we're looking to be a little more disciplined and maybe hit better pitches and hopefully we'll get better results. Defensively, you had a little miscue there in left field, but it's been a pretty flawless game. Talk about that. Yeah, kids are ready to play. Our defense is one of our strong suits, obviously. And uh, she lost her footing out there and I think tried to do a little too much when the ball got by her. But uh, you know, those things happen. And we got to score a run to, to win this game anyway. So we're, we're in good shape. What's the key to the next few innings for, uh, for you guys? Discipline, executing, and uh, hopefully keeping them from scoring anymore. Coach, thanks and best of luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. Back to you, Brad Molly. All right, Benton Community Head Coach Eric Stenberg. Thank you very much, Mark. As Emily Ira. The topic of discussion, uh, here's a fun note for you. Had 10 strikeouts in, uh, in the 1-0 loss to Benton Community on June 10th. Today, 10 strikeouts through four innings pitch. So she is uh, locked in and ready to roll in this state championship game. All big players rise to the challenge and, and big, when they have big opportunities. That's exactly what Ira has done today, really having command, getting on top of batters again, sounding a little bit like a broken record, but Coach Stenberg alluded to it there in his interview. Because Bobcats need to stay off those high pitches out of the zone once she gets on top of hitters. So Thank leading you. things off here is Hola. McKenna Miller. I have number four, Bunnowitz, going into left field for number three, Havlick. And so we do have a... Yes, sir. Defensive switch. Four, four, three in left field. Muchas gracias. Looks like McKenna Bonowitz. McKenna Bonowitz will check in at left field your book? for Benton Community. Number four for number three. Left field. Four for three, left field. So new this year to the state tournament, the uh, home plate umpire is making the uh, call up to the press box to get uh, substitutions recorded and reported in. So that's why we're able to listen in with home plate umpire Sergio Villarreal. Ball. First pitch down low by Amber Pfizer. Great they work by this IPTV sound crew. They do such an excellent job. Love those on field mics, love those sideline interviews. Really appreciate all the different camera angles. Anna Stenberg for the, excuse me, we've got uh, McKenna Miller for the Solon Bobcats. To Solon Spartans, rather, leaving this fifth Can inning off in? with a base hit. Nine for ten. Nine for ten. Looks like we'll have Emma Winders in to run for McKenna Miller. Number nine running for number ten at first base. So Emma Winders, a freshman. Coach Jim White. You can tell he's been at this a long time. He's quite the strategist. He wants to maximize every opportunity that he has, so he will use this pinch runner here. Substitution number nine, running for number 10 at first base. Gracias. 
Coach Sergio. White, yeah. again yesterday, talking in the semifinal action about wanting to push a run across every inning. Haven't been able to do that today. Of course, uh, you wouldn't expect to be able to do that with this high level of an opponent, but they want to keep the pressure on. We'll definitely try to advance that runner from first all the way home. On the move is one and safe down at second base is Winders. And that's why she's in the game as a pinch runner, folks. A lot of speed. Nice pop-up slide right into the bag. She had beat that throw there. No reason to slide around that tag. Throw right on the money, too, from J.C. Lyons. Just not quite in time. They did one hop, I guess, to Brunson, as you see there on the replay. Pop flag caught by the catcher for out number one. Trying to push Winders over to third. Obertin unable to do so. Solon had exactly what they wanted. No outs, runner on second. Wanted to sacrifice that player over. Okay, so we're dropping down to nine. So six is coming up to bat. So you just heard Coach Jim White say his flex is coming in for the flex DP. Number six is going to come in to bat for herself, so we're going to drop to nine temporarily. So this will be Taylor Ryan, an eighth grader, playing in left field, will come in. Jim White will utilize the flex position here. I'm guessing it's because Taylor Ryan's pretty good I have at putting the ball in play, but also put pressure on this Bobcats defense. And not only you put the ball in play, sacrifice the runner over, but maybe you can advance and reach first base safely, potentially allowing a first and third situation for one out. That's the ideal here. We'll see if yep. the, the eighth grader can get it done. And as you mentioned, that's what Coach White talked to us about yesterday after their semifinal game. As that foul goes into the backstop for strike one. He said they're playing for one run. He said a lot of times he'll just let his hitters go after it. But with this type of pitching at this level here at the state tournament, he says we got to kind of play for one run in inning or two runs in inning. Well, he knows that Benton has some big hitters like an Alyssa Weeble who with one swing of the back can really change this game. So he wants a little bit of an insurance run here. A foul tip for strike two for the eighth grader. Taylor, Taylor Ryan. Two strikes. Taylor Ryan chasing that high heat there. First pitch that was offered was down low. And if you're going to bunt, if you're going to sacrifice bunt, you can't just drop the bat. You got to take your body down with it. Another foul ball. Does a good job of getting a swing on it there. Of course, changes things a little bit when you're going to the plate thinking that you're just looking to lay down a bunt. But then, uh oh, you get two strikes on you and you have to really battle. And swinging the bat here. Amber Pfizer working with an 0-2 count for Benton Community. Another foul ball by Ryan. Well, Ryan can really scoot, you can tell. Even when she's fouling these off, she's already a couple of steps toward first base. Again, putting pressure on this Bobcats defense with that speed. That time looks at strike three and unable to move the runner over. Painted that Taylor Ryan. Excuse me, painted that outside okay. corner. Again, we've seen so much of that. So seven strikeouts now for Amber Pfizer for the Benton Community Bobcats. Two away here in the fifth in the top of the order. Sydney Lawson is looking for a little redemption after an 0-2 start here. Striking out looking both times. And Coach Jim White calls a quick Offensive timeout has a little one-on-one -on -one conversation with his junior leadoff batter, probably challenging her, telling her Pfizer has won the battle two times in a row. It's time for you to step up. It's a slap into center field. And Ben Community able to get out of the jam. Leadoff single, pushing the runner over to second base, but no runs for the Solon Spartans in the fifth. They do still lead it 1-0 as the Benton Community Bobcats come to the plate here in the bottom of the fifth. Great shot into the Bobcats dug out there. Looking for somebody to step up and get after Emily Ira, who has been a dominant pitcher for the Solon Spartans here in the Class 3A state championship game. Still just one hit 
for Benton on the year. And this is a squad that's coming into the state tournament hitting 373 as a squad. So definitely an illustration of the pitching performance by the senior Emily Ira for Solon. So last year at the 2014 state championship, we talked about Solon being in the 4A title game. Emily Ira was a first team All-Stater is just a workhorse for this Solon team. Mixes her pitches up well, and she has been dialed in today, to say the least. Coach White, it was interesting chatting with him after yesterday's game and talking about the team and the, their progression and evolution as the season has progressed. And he said, we weren't very good earlier in the year, but he said the seniors for this squad, speaking about Ira, Nirad, and, and Ferliska, have really just led this squad. He said they have taken things to another level. They're sick of getting the championship games and losing. They've yep. done that twice in the last three years, and they don't want to go home without that championship trophy and those beautiful roses. A conference opponent trying to get in the way of that. Both Solon and Benton community out of the Womack Conference. Just a short drive from Cedar Rapids Island, Eastern Iowa. At the plate, Anna Stenberg swing and a miss. As Ira continues to sling those strikes and get in front of hitters. Coach White calling pitches from the dugout, relaying them to his catcher, Bevins. Change up missed high. And that got the Solon Spartan fans a little excited. Catcher's mitt caught it right in a pretty good spot, but that changeup dropped a lot after it crossed the plate. Well, she turned to ask for a little bit of clarification from the umpire. And, and a swing and a miss for Stenberg. And it's one and two. Stenberg striking out in her first at bat in the second inning. Stenberg looks like she may try to shorten up here a little bit, kind of squaring up to the pitcher. Really try to see it coming in. Slaps it foul and out of play. Good job. Staying alive there. It's been a lot of fun watching Emily Ira work at the mound here. As she has, has had herself a whale of the first four innings with 11 strikeouts. Excuse me, 10 strikeouts thus far. For the senior, for the Spartans. Nice job there. Stenberg. Hanging tough with a couple of strikes. See if Ira maybe goes out of the zone here, getting her to chase a little bit while up in the count. Ira the senior, Stenberg the sophomore at the plate for Benton Community. And a nice at bat by Anna Stenberg for the Bobcats. Great job shortening up. We've seen a couple Benton players look as though they're maybe going to shorten up. They kind of square to the pitcher and then they still take a big cut at it. Stenzlin's doing a nice job here. Ground ball left side off the glove of Hike. And Benton Community with the leadoff runner aboard here in the fifth inning. It's a great piece of, of hitting by Stenberg just hanging tough. Maybe wasn't pretty, but that's exactly what happens. You put pressure on the defense. Solon has not seen a lot of action defensively. Looks like we're going to see a substitution here. Let's see if we can listen in here. So running now is Samantha Robbie, an eighth grader at first base and five now will be batting in place of Havlick or excuse me you got a couple subs you're correct I got number 10 coming in to run for number eight first place oh, excuse me it actually be in for Bonowitz because Bonowitz checked into left and field but yes coming in, bat in the seventh position for three I'm sorry, for four. so it's Laura Machino, a freshman to pinch hit for her for the Benton community. Thank you. Bobcats. Right. 
think this is just a pinch hit. Expect a re-entry. First, I got number 10 coming in to run for number eight at first base. And then I've got number five coming in to finish it for number four. Thank you. That's a good explanation right there. So Robbie, courtesy runs at first base here on the fifth for Stenberg, who gets aboard. They charged an error to Jess Hike at third. And looking at one low now is Laura Machino. Nice big jump out there on first base. A couple of players in that solid dugout yelling going. She had fooled them. Nice big jump. Again, exactly what you want to do. Make this defense think. Bun attempt goes foul into the backstop for Machino. Machino now hitting 356 on the season. 32 hits. Three doubles on the year and a home run. And five stolen bases. So she's got some speed here too. Might be looking to sacrifice and get a run and a runner in scoring position, but might also be able to reach herself. There's the bunt dropped by the third baseman. The throw goes to first to get the out safe at second. It is the runner Robbie. Does her job, but uh, Benton community pretty fortunate there. A great job of getting the bat on the ball, but a third baseman really crowding the batter does a good job though keeps her composure still fires to first four no, one out it was a drop that was not on the transfer it was, it was but was down. not able to get that lead runner nice explanation by the umpire to jim white explaining that it was it was a drop it was not on the transfer and i would agree yep so benton community the tying run on second base here in the bottom of the fifth inning and to the plate amber pfizer the junior pitcher gonna help her own cause here. First pitch strike, and Pfizer just does not like those outside strikes that have been called this entire game. A strikeout by Pfizer in her first at bat. And again, she knows that this is a pretty big strike zone. Umpire definitely giving that inside and outside corner. If it's there, she's gotta be ready to put a bat on the ball. Swing and a miss, makes it 0-2. As Emily Ira going to work on the batter here with a base runner on Two second strikes. base. That's Samantha Robbie. Courtesy runner down on second. See if she can execute, move the runner over. Ball. That one right up in the face of Pfizer. A little bit of a brush back pitch. See if Kaiser can <laughs> hang in there here. Kaiser chases one, and it's strike three, and there's two away here in the fifth. So 11 strikeouts now for Emily Ira. And here's a look at it. That pitcher on pitcher action, Emily Ira. Has definitely gotten the better of that battle today. Jessica Heilman at the plate now. Ball. For Benton Community. First pitch off the plate. Heilman a strikeout in the third inning. Her second crack now at Emily Ira comes here in the fifth with a runner on second base and two outs. Right, there's a slap. Right side of the infield, can of corn for Allie Herdliska. And Solon's defense able to take care of business after Ben Community got a runner on second base. Lead off runner aboard and unable to do anything with it offensively. So let's take a look now at our game summary here. How do we get here so far as we get ready for the sixth inning? of this Class 3A state championship game. Well, we'll start in the second inning. Solon got it started. The misplay out in left, and Molly Duckett, the courtesy runner, scoring the only run of the game so far. There's been some solid pitching beyond that, so one miscue. 
out in left field by Benton Community. Not charged with an error though, just it got down right in front of her and just hopped away from her. Kind of an unfortunate bounce for the Bobcats, but Solon still holding on. Their 1-0 lead as we go to the sixth inning here. These two teams combining for just four hits. We anticipated that this would be a little bit of a pitcher's duel. I would say that Ira has probably gotten the better of it so far. Maybe she is a strikeout pitcher, maybe not over her career to the extent that Pfizer has been, but she is in the strikeout machine today. And here she'll try to help out at the plate where she's been very, very good in her senior season. Being over 600 on the year. So Molly, let's talk about uh, Amber Pfizer's matchup against what we thought were the Solon bats. We thought maybe Solon's offense looked a little bit better than Benton's in the semifinals, but two equally tough pitchers. And uh, you thought this might be uh, maybe a really key matchup here with Amber Pfizer against the Solon bats. Uh, so far, what do you think? Well, One I, run, three hits. Well, this uh, Benton squad not charged with any errors, but there, there have been some things that Solon has done to put the pressure on the defense. So maybe an error doesn't show up on the scoreboard, but they've done just enough. That aggressive base running, they've put the ball in play a little more than this Benton squad has done, and that's exactly what they want to do. They've really made the Bobcats think as that pressure has been put on them. So I think Solon has done a better job than they did a year ago against Cage Lowry in that 4A championship game. There's Ira slapping it down the left field line. It's a fair ball, and it'll be a stand-up double for Emily Ira, the pitcher for Solon. A leadoff double here in the sixth. Well, Emily Ira, as we've said, will play at Western Illinois next year. It'll be interesting to follow her college career. She is clearly not just a pitcher. So I, I, Coach Jim Wise said they think she will pitch some. That may not come until later in her career there. But looking at her as an outfielder certainly can help things out at the plate. Very versatile. Love to see that out of a pitcher. She doesn't just want to stay in the circle. She wants to help her squad on both sides. And she'll run. Doesn't use a courtesy runner here. Stays in the game, does it all. Good sign of her athleticism. And I think the way she thinks the game well. Coach White wants to push an insurance run across here. He trusts her in this situation. There's Nirad. A high, deep drive, left center field, and it's into the bleachers. A two-run shot by Taylor Nirad, and Solon leads it 3-0 here in the 3A title game. Taylor Nirad. Such a great performance yesterday. She was five of six in the tournament coming into this game. Had a two out home run yesterday. Was three of four in that semifinal game. She'll take her talents to Cedar Rapids and play at Kirkwood. Awfully impressive piece of hitting there. Going opposite field into the left center gap. Coach Stenberg come in and have a little bit of a conversation with his defense here. I wouldn't say that the game is out of reach because Benton does have some big sticks. We got some more bats, all right? Let's not panic there. Let's shut them down here, no more runs. Let's see what we can do, all right? Let's make the best of this day. Let's try to get, get this win. We can still get this. Don't yeah. give up, okay? Let's go. Good piece of advice from the head coach. He said yesterday, we, we feel like all the pressure is on Solon. Yep. We haven't been here since 1998. We're happy to be here. We're thrilled to be in this championship game. But that was kind of the message there. We've got nothing to lose. Let's get out of this inning. Let's give ourselves a shot. They still have two more times to hit. Top of the order coming up in the sixth inning for Benton Community. So I get to go through some of their order again. Here's the number four batter for the Solon Spartans, Ali Herdliska. 0 for 2 so far today, as Amber Pfizer has had her number, a strikeout in the second inning, and then it was a pop out to left field in the fourth. Gets a bat on it. Fly ball, shortstop able to make the catch. Lee Brunson with ease in the grass, and there's one away. Just the first out is the first two runners for Solon. The first two batters, Ira with that double, and Nirad with a two-run shot. 
We've talked about the importance of these seniors for this Solon squad. They step up in a big way with those two more insurance runs in the sixth inning. Ira and Nirad just taking matters into their own hands. So Monica Bevins, the catcher at the plate. Amber Pfizer works out of the circle. Inside, and it's 2-0. and One away here for the Bobcats defense. Nobody aboard. And two runs in this inning for the Spartans. They've got one inside, so Pies are unable to hit the corner, though, thus far. Devins looks at it all the way, and it's ball four. And we'll see if Pfizer can kind of regain composure here after giving up that two run homer, throws four straight balls. So after that back into run is Molly Duckett. Yep, courtesy runner scored the first run of the ball game after a Bevins walk in the second inning. So after another Monica Bevins walk, Molly Duckett. Back on the bases, she'll be at first with Jess Hike to the plate. An RBI double knocked in Duckett in that second inning. And Duckett Great gets read. down to second. Oh, and got her right before she got to second. What a throw from J.C. Lyons, the Bobcat catcher. And I think that was a great read by the base runner, but she slid right into that tag. Would have been better suited maybe going head first or going feet first around it. I think that's a great read there. It was just the slightest bit of bobble by Lyons. Heck of a job by Lyons, though, to keep composure. Great job by Brunson, too, to be right by the bag. And looked like Duckett's foot maybe got caught up with Brunson's foot and never even made it to second base. Well, when, you, when you're aggressive on the base pass and you put pressure on the defense like Solon does. That's exactly how Jim White coaches this team. You're going to run yourself off the base paths on occasion. You might run yourself out of an inning on occasion just because you're going to be aggressive. That might happen. McKenna Bonowitz able to make the catch out in left field to end the inning, but Solon powers a couple more across the plate. A two-run home run by Taylor Nerad here in the top of the sixth inning. And it's the top of the order coming up for the Benton Community Bobcats. So let's send it over now to Mark Amadeo. All right, thanks, Brad. And uh, we have uh, one of the Solon fans here, Kevin Kidwell, longtime supporter. You know, Kevin, when I asked the coaches, okay, who should I talk to here, uh, the Solon? They mentioned you. You've been a big supporter of Solon softball. Yeah, uh, my whole family's a big supporter of softball. We had four daughters that played for Solon, and the community's, the community's behind them all the time. So. Um, it's fun to come out and watch these girls. They're, they're extremely hard workers. They have one of the best coaches that ever coached in the state of Iowa, and Jim White, and it's just a lot of fun. We've been here five years in a row, and that's pretty special. That's real special. I, the big run kind of started in 03, and uh, they've been here most of the time since that, so. Got three runs on the board. They need any more? They need more. There's never enough. <laughs> right. All right, thanks, Kevin. Thank you very much. Back to you, Brad. Thank you very much, Mark. Yeah, never enough, right? And if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Kidwell mentioned had some daughters playing for Solon. A couple yep. played for Iowa State okay. in recent years. Yeah, Solon Spartans sending out some Division One softball talent for sure. Not just uh, this year as we've talked about it, but over the years. There's Emily Ira, what she's done through five innings, 11 strikeouts, no runs across. And the one walk, one hit so far. And having total command, doing an excellent job, not just going right at batters, but just that one walk, as you said, not giving Benton many opportunities at all, not giving them much hope at all. But as Coach Stenberg mentioned in that timeout, he said, we've still got a couple of bats ahead of us. We're not gonna let roll over and die. Let's get out of this inning, have a couple more opportunities with our sticks. Let's see what we can make happen. Quick conversation going on down at third. For a girl coming into fair territory to cross and coming to the other side, so. After that home run, what do you think? 
So team warning placed against Solon. Sounded like they said somebody go. came on the field without a helmet, so. Maybe a little too much celebration after that <laughs> bomb by Nirad. I tell you though, it'd be awfully hard to not get too excited after something like that happens for your teammate. So Lee Brunson, the leadoff batter for Benton Community, will lead off the bottom of the sixth inning. Well, the Bobcats trailing 3-0. See if they can get something rolling here offensively against the very tough Emily Ira. One and one after the swing and miss and by Brunson. Starting to get warmer here in Fort Dodge. When we started this game, it was pretty cool, overcast, some thunderstorms in the area, and it is heat is definitely rising. We're just under 87 degrees. Humidity rising. We're fortunate to be in the shade, but Emily Ira showing no signs of fatigue, showing no signs of being slowed down by that heat and humidity whatsoever. Well, and we talked a lot about the top three and the Benton community batting order really having a lot of the offensive production. And Ira's had their number so far today. Hulsebus with a single and a walk. Other than that, and a swing and a miss, another strikeout. 12 now for Emily Ira. Well, this Benton squad, no seniors, as we have mentioned many times, if they are unable to get the win here, won't be surprised if maybe in the off season they do some work on laying off high heat. <laughs> you saw the replay there, another one up above the letters on the front of the jersey. Certainly Emily Ira is graduating, but Jim White, Eric Stenberg will be dueling again next year, we assume, and Coach White, he's a smart guy over 900 wins to prove it. If the Benton players have a hard time laying off some of that high action today, they may have trouble laying off it a year from now. And there's strike two on Halsebus. And these kids know each other too, not just playing in the same conference, but talking to Amber Pfizer of Benton Community, their pitcher. She played travel ball with many of these Solon kids, Herliska, Ira, Miller, Lawson. So they know each other more than just when they meet in sports a few times every year. They're playing together. They're working together through the summer, through the off season. But they're going at it today for the Class 3A state championship. A slap left side of the infield. Nice play by Jess Height. See what Weedle can do here. It's a frustrating day for the junior. As we said, didn't get many opportunities in quarterfinal action. Mount Vernon, they realize she carries a big stick. Walked her three times in that game. She said yeah. yesterday she was happy just to see some pitches to hit, and she took full advantage. A couple of home runs. See, they're 21 on the season. Hitting 588 with 63 runs batted in, but can't get it going here today, at least not yet. Another big swing, and it's even at one and one. She's getting her money's worth out of her swings today, that's for sure. Big swings from Alyssa Weeble. Strike two it is Weeble, Emery, Emery Ira. One ball, two strikes. With two strikes on Weeble. Jim White calling a heck of a game for the Spartans. You gotta get them in a little bit quicker, okay? I don't wanna have to violate. Solon taking a little bit too much time relaying ball, that pitch strikes. call from Coach Jim White to his catcher. Ira delivers the one, two, slapped into right two field, points. and it's gonna be foul down the right field line. What a good job of battling there. I think that might be the first time we've seen Elise, Alyssa get a piece of the ball against Ira today. Well, we saw Stenberg battle an inning ago, was able to battle and force an error by the Solon defense. 
One, two, cranked into left center, and that's going to be extra bases for Alyssa Weeble. And Benton Community gets it started here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Oh, Weeble's a competitor. So not only is a competitor, she has the, the skill set physically to match that competitiveness. Great job of learning from what happened to her the first couple of times at bat and actually learning from earlier offerings in this at bat. Does a great job driving it to that gap, the stand up double. Rolling all the way to the fence and Weeble an easy double. As the throw comes in from the outfield. So a two out rally. Trying to get rolling here for the Benton Community Bobcats. As J.C. Lyons swings through strike one. Coach Stenberg explaining to J.C. Keep your head in. You're pulling your head out a little bit. Now watch that ball all the way till it hits the bat. There's a drive. Center field. Over the center fielder's head and off the wall. Weeble will score. And it's an RBI single for J.C. Lyons. And the Bobcats are on the scoreboard. Great job by... Taylor Nierad, the center fielder for Solon, unable to catch that fly ball over her head, but does a great job of retrieving it, getting to it very quickly, throwing it to second base. Lyons is unable to advance to second on a double, has to retreat back to first, and that's crucial. As a base hit here with a runner on first, you're likely to score. Now you see Weeble scoring the Bobcats' first run of the game. Holly Schulte, an eighth grader, standing on first base, running for Lions. We'll see if the middle of this Bobcats lineup can help things out here. Weeble gets it going. Great job of fighting off some pitches. It's 0 for 2. Great job of hanging right in there as a competitor, getting a double to the gap. and. Sometimes it can be a little bit contagious. Lions follows suit with a nice hard hit to center. So the umpire gets Holly Schulte checked in as the courtesy runner. Emily Ira asks for a new softball and a two out rally. Here in the sixth, Benton Community. First run of the game for them. Comes in as Eagle hits a double and trots home on the J.C. Lions RBI blast to center field. So now it's Angie Gorko at the plate for the Bobcats. We have not seen Benton threaten much in this game. We'll see how Emily Ira can handle it here. Back-to-back -back hits with two outs. Tying run at the plate for Benton Community. Here's the 1-1. Fly ball, it's going to stay on the infield. Jess Height able to handle it right next to that third base pillow. And then Community Bobcats get on the board. Trailing Solon, 3 1. Over here, or they're going to call him out. So, hey, no one run across the diamond. Okay. Right. Second, look at me. Right here, we got to win this game. Try to get a way to get one. We got to find a way to get one. Great job. We're doing a fantastic job. Okay, we're going to get hey. right here. Let's go. Compete each pitch here. Compete each pitch. Come on, let's win this pitch. Great encouragement out of the head coach, veteran head coach. Let's take a look now at the press box here at the beautiful. Harlan Rogers Sports Complex and a look inside. Very hard at work up in the newly renovated press box. Nice look at the 3A championship game. Used to get a little cramped down here where we're sitting underneath the grandstand with all the media covering the action this week, but that new press box is providing them nice comfort, nice bird's eye view from above. Stands here for the fans. You've got Benton Community there on the third base dugout side. Solon on the first base dugout side. And Beecher's in the outfield. And there you see us in the shade behind home plate. 
Beautiful day for some softball here in Fort Dodge. As Sola leads things off with McKenna Miller at the plate. Top of the seventh inning. Ball. And the first two pitches outside of the strike zone for Fies, McKenna Miller. Well, Pfizer either just missing that outside corner or not getting some of the same calls she might have gotten her earlier in the game. Pop fly is going to be left side of the infield. And Weebles underneath it. One away here in the seventh for Benton Community. Weeble wearing one of those face masks over at third base. There are no requirements as far as wearing those or not. You see some throughout the tournament. Sometimes those two hot corners, sometimes pitchers will wear them, really just a player's choice. There's talk about making it mandatory, but so far it has not gone through yet. Mark Amadeo has given us some good information prior to the game. We'll have to check in with him later today to get his take on it. Here's the 0-1 inside to Nicola Overteen. Bobcat fans wanted that call to strike. One and one here in the seventh with one away. Fly ball is going to be out of play. First base side. Good Let's battle. To one and two. Good battle there out of Obertin. Hanging tough. Two Obertin, a junior, playing right field today for the Spartans. Ball. That one's inside. So two and two now the count. Obertin with a pretty disciplined at bat here so far. Kaiser wants a new ball. Will exchange with the umpire behind the plate. He will discard that one. Ask for a new one. Two twos fouled straight back. Good fight out of both these teams so far here today. You heard Coach Jim White in the dugout right before the seventh inning. Let's get one more. He knows that two run lead might not be enough. Great encouragement out of him saying win this pitch, win every pitch. I mean, all positive. Chases a high fly ball and sails it into right center. And Shelby Hulsebus, piece of cake for her out in center field. Thank you. Fighting the sun out there and right, right center. Okay. Okay. Utilize this flex again. So instead of Lexi Stebrel. Feels like Taylor Ryan has a, yep. a better shot at getting on base here again. He's always looking to manufacture runs. Benton got one back in the bottom of the sixth. He wants to get one back in the top of the seventh. Had a good at bat, fouled off a lot of pitches in her first at bat. And Taylor Ryan with the speed she brings to the table, if she can get on base with two outs, would probably have a little more opportunity to advance, maybe on a stolen base opportunity. That bun attempt rolls foul. And, and there, a great showing of her speed down the line. Weevil was letting it roll foul, but I tell you, Taylor Ryan already to first base by the time that had happened. And you've got Martinson and Weevil very close to the plate. Ball. Ryan looked at it just low. Make it one and two. Painting that outside corner again. Up in the count. Want to make her chase. Slap, Weeble fields it, throw to first is in time. And the Bobcats will come to the plate for their final hurrah. They need two runs or more here in the bottom of the seventh inning. It's the bottom half of the order coming up for the Bobcats. Well, you've seen the Solon defense. 
bear down. You get, take a couple good hacks, nothing above the waist. You get two strikes, get there, come back, and put it in place somewhere. Let's find a way to do it. We're bobcats. Let's go. One, two, three, find a way. Let's go. Good piece of coaching out of Coach Stenberg. Said nothing above the waist, something that we've talked about earlier. If it looks too good to be true, probably is. I don't see Emily Iris serving up any meatballs in the bottom of the seventh when she has a chance to win a state championship as a senior. So 3-1 is our score, Benton Community. With one run in the sixth inning. Three hits on the day, one in the first. And two in the sixth. They'll have to do it against Emily Ira. Anna Stenberg had a nice at bat her last time up. Got on base, fouled off some pitches. Ira, her strikeout total up to 12. Got Stenberg in the second inning. <laughs> Stenberg reached on an error in the fifth. And at this point, it does not matter how you get on base. You just need to find a way to get on base. Well, Solon has shown a little bit of vulnerability when Benton has put the ball on the bat. It hasn't happened all that often, quite honestly. Ira's been so good with strikeouts. A swing at strike two. And Ira's ahead in the count on Anna Stenberg. Sophomore first baseman for the Benton community Bobcats. Behind in the count, 0-2. Nice discipline. And you know Ira's aware that a lot of strikeouts have come from those high pitches. And she throws one up by the eyes there on Stenberg. Well, you get up in the count, you can, you've can you got that batter right where you want her. And you can waste a couple of pitches, keeping it out of the zone, try to get him to chase. Just like that, one away. And strikeout number 13 for Ira. The Solon team, these Solon fans, they can smell it. They've been awfully close. Twice in the last three years, they do not want to be close again. So 13 strikeouts on the day. Jesse Havlick, the Starting left fielder back in the game now to bat here in the seventh inning. Umpire, go talk to the folks upstairs. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning. This is the 3A state championship game. Benton community at the plate. They need two runs to catch the Solon Spartans. Emily Ira delivering quite a game, and there's a foul ball. The slap attempt by Havlick. I have a feeling that Emily Ira may be named to the all-tournament team. <laughs> you think? Had yeah. a pretty good performance today and throughout the week. 13 strikeouts here in the championship game for Ira. And now has two strikes on Havlick with one away here in the seventh. Two it's getting to be crunch time here for Benton Community here. They're looking for a base runner aboard. With one away already here in the seventh. Slap bunt goes into the backstop. Laura Leonard was all over it to our right. Time. Getting ready for the 4A championship game that's coming up. Did you have that as a bunt? Okay. No they bunt. Said she did make a swing at it. Officials doing a good job of getting together. Villarreal goes down to Jason okay. Slater standing on third base. Just to make sure that he didn't have that down as a bunt, that it was a swing, and it was. Another swing, fouled up, and over the backstop, into the stands, and Havlick remains alive with the 0-2 count. Nice piece of hitting here 
Coming back into the lineup, re-entering to hit. Right back up the middle, and Havlick is aboard for the Bobcats. Right off the glove of Emily Ira. I'd say, that's, I'd say that's one of the hardest hit balls we've maybe seen out of Benton, of course. That previous inning, Weevil and Lions hit a couple of nice shots to the outfield, had a little air under them, but that was just a sharp line drive right back up the middle. So the tying run is at the plate with one out here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Amber Pfizer, the pitcher at the plate for Benton Community, swings at strike one. Having a hard time laying off this high heat from Ira. We've said that a lot today. Jesse Havlick at first for Benton Community. Pfizer chases one low and away. And quickly the count goes to 0 and 2. Pfizer, the junior, played travel ball with a lot of these Solon kids, including Ira. Fly ball fouled away, straight back. Well, we figured we maybe wouldn't get out of this game without a little additional drama. Number one, number two in the state, conference rivals, split during the regular season. I think it's probably been all that we had hoped for. That pitch outside. One run games in both of those contests earlier in the season. As it was Solon beating Benton 6-5 and then Benton Community beating Solon 1-0. And now the count's even at 2-2. Two and two. Coach White really working that outside corner. Head in the count again, you can throw a couple of junk pitches. Try to get Pfizer to chase something that would be awfully difficult to hit. There's a foul tip. And Bevin's just unable to catch up, to hold on to that pitch behind the plate and Pfizer stays alive. Pfizer keeping her cool in the batter's box. Foul back, and how about this battle between a couple of kids who were first team all staters a year ago? Ira, the senior, on the pitching rubber for Solon. Pfizer, the junior, at the plate. And her team trailing by two here in the bottom of the seventh. Fly ball again, it's going to get out of play. Bevins gives chase, but into the stands it goes. She catches up to that high heat, gets just enough of it. Two balls, two strikes. See if maybe Ira tries to paint that outside corner. She went to it earlier in this at bat. There's the ninth pitch of this at bat. Goes with the off speed. Haven't seen too much of that out of Ira. Hasn't really been a strikeout pitch for her. Wanted to see if she could maybe get Pfizer maybe out on her front foot, maybe just keep her off balance a little bit. She's able to lay off. Full count. Drive into center field. Right on top of it is Taylor Nerad. And back to first dives Havlick. So Pfizer, a great at bat, saw 10 pitches, put a huge charge in it into center field. But there's two away now for the Bobcats. Well, and Coach Stenberg meets Pfizer as she is hustling back to the dugout. Of course, she is disappointed, but he says that's a great job. I mean, if you think about it, that, that line drive she hits, if it's maybe just a couple feet to our left, that's a double in the gap. That's scoring a run, and you have a totally different ball game. Okay. Hey, be aggressive here, ladies. Someone make a big play. Hey, here we go. So in Spartan head coach Jim White has won over 900 career games. A man of few words. Yep. Gets out there. 
calm his troops down. You're close. He's got 121 wins while at Solon. Over 900 in his career, but he's looking for win 122 as a Solon Spartans head coach. To the plate for Benton Community, Jessica Heilman. Looks at ball one. 0 for 2 today for Heilman. As you see the 271 hitter. Strikeout in the third, and the pop out came in the fifth inning. Swing and a miss. One and one to count. So the drama builds here in the bottom of the seventh. Benton Community working with two outs. The slap right side. Pass the diving heard Liska throw back the second. Hamlet gets back safely. A big round past <laughs> second base. <sighs> and now the tying run for Benton Community stands on first base. Nice piece of hitting by Jessica Heilman taking that outside pitch to the right side. Like you mentioned, a nice big round around <laughs> second base. She has to dive back just in time. And it's a totally different ball game all of a sudden. Brunson with a chance to make something special happen here. The bottom of the order setting something up for the top of the order. Lead off batter, Lee Brunson at the plate. Swing and fouled back and out of play by Brunson. I like the aggressiveness out of the hitter. Brunson 0 for 3, the leadoff batter. Almost get a sense that she's due here in the seventh inning. We said top of the order has been so good this week. Good eyes lays off that high pitch. Evens the count. One and one. Two away here for Benton Community. Bottom of the seven. Brunson looks at one upstairs. Things getting interesting here. There's a reason why Coach Jim White wanted to manufacture runs at every opportunity he had, pulling out all the stops, utilizing pinch runners, utilizing that flex position. He knew that this Benton team was not going to go away. Tying run on first base for the Bobcats. Brunson looks at strike two. Deuces across the board. Two balls, two strikes with two outs here. Ben Community trailing by two. Ira to deliver to Brunson. Foul back. We'll do it again. Brunson, a 350 hitter coming into the tournament. Double digit stolen bases, very quick, hitting up the line, hitting from the right side. A third team All Stater a year ago as a sophomore. Brunson slaps this one foul once again. Not a power hitter, pretty typical leadoff batter. Wants to put the ball in play, let her speed work for her. Get on base. So 3 1, Solon leading Benton Community by two with two runners aboard for the Bobcats offense. Slap left side off the glove of Hike and she touched it in foul territory. So we'll do it again. Jess Hike, the third baseman, reaching out past the foul line before she touched it. And some oohs and ahs from the crowd. Gets a glove on it. Looks like she was outside of that well, third base line. Foot was about on the stripe, and she was reaching out beyond her foot, so I think that's a good piece of officiating. Two balls, two strikes. Oh, and called strike three. 
And that's your ball game. The Solon Spartans, the Class 3A state champions. And that was a heck of a celebration for the folks in the orange and black. This has been a long time coming for the senior class in particular. 14 strikeouts for Emily Ira. Started the game. Striking out eight batters in their first eight outs in the first three innings. Ends the game with a strikeout. We'll see a lot of this Benton squad in the future. No seniors, as we said. Losing in a heartbreaking fashion like this definitely will serve as good motivation for Alyssa Weeble and Amber Pfizer and the crew. Solon did the same thing a year ago, losing the 4A title game. There's that final pitch, strike three for Emily Ira, and celebration ensues. Lee Brunson had battled off some tough pitches, really hung tough that entire at bat. I think she just kind of froze a little bit. And great piece of pitching by Emily Ira, not just settling down as things got dramatic here in the bottom of the seventh, but throughout the entire game, as you said, a number of strikeouts, just a heck of a competitor. And Benton Community, five hits on the day, but most of those coming in these last couple of innings, not a lot going for them, much of the ball game. Credit them for sticking with it and staying after Solon and keeping it alive there in the bottom of the seventh inning. All tournament team medals will be Dr. Greg Thomas, president of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union Board of Directors. Those on the Class 3A All Tournament team, Allie Herliska Solon. <laughs> Leah Brunson, Benton Community. Sidley, Sydney Lawson Solon. <laughs> Shelby Holsebus, Benton Community. <laughs> Libby Ryan, Mount Vernon. Marissa Promise, Green County. <laughs> Olivia Brick, Center Point Urbana. <laughs> Amber Pfizer, Benton Community. Ira Solon. <laughs> Alyssa Weeble, Benton Community. <laughs> and the captain of the Class 3A All Tournament team from Solon High School, Taylor Nirad. So Taylor Nerad, the senior center fielder for the Solon Spartans. A two-run blast in the sixth inning to help the Spartans win the Class 3A state championship. She'll captain that good-looking all-tournament team. Some quality kids there. So you see Allie Herdliska of Solon, Lee Brunson, Benton Community, Lawson from Solon, Hulsebus from Benton Community. Ryan of Mount Vernon, Promise from Green County, Brett from CPU, Pfizer of Benton Community. That's your 3A All Tournament team. A couple of players being recognized from Green County and Center Pointer Banna. Green County getting the win in that third place game, seven to six. 
the title sponsor of the Girls Athletic Union. Presenting awards are members of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union Board of Directors, Deanne Kramer, Tom Kinseth, George Tracy, and Dave Wilkerson. Congratulations to the runner-up in Class 3A, head coach Eric Stenberg and the Bobcats of Benton Community on an outstanding 2015 softball season. your 2015 Class 3A state softball champions, head coach Jim White and the Spartans from Solon High School. So there's your Solon Lady Spartans, the Class 3A state champions. As we have two champions crowned here so far today with much more to come. Here on IPTV, Solon Spartans take care of business as Emily Ira throws 14 strikeouts and Taylor Nerad a two-run blast in the sixth inning. Just a great battle between these two teams. Well, such a talented batch there for Solon. The three seniors received that trophy hand in hand. Had a hard time believing that they were going to be beat today as they finally had an opportunity to bring home that championship trophy. All right, so Solon, your 3A state champions here at the state softball tournament. More champions to be crowned coming up here on Iowa Public Television. Funding for the Iowa Girls High School Softball Championships is provided by... The path to greatness starts early. The Iowa Farm Bureau believes in Iowa's youth and their pursuit of greatness. That's why we're proud to be the title sponsor of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. Each student's effort is important, and when one rises, we all rise to a better Iowa. Fairway, along with Nabisco, Wells Blue Bunny, and Frito-Lay, is a proud sponsor of the 2015 Iowa Girls High School Sports Championships. We congratulate all the schools and student athletes participating in this year's Girls High School State Softball Championships. Fairway, proud to care for the places we work and live. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialist, providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community. Mid-American Energy and their Energy Advantage programs are dedicated to increasing the awareness of energy efficiency in Iowa's homes and businesses. Information is at midamericanenergy.com. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service.